Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Finally recovered after the Lion King shot for shot CGI photorealistic remake that John Faro had directed. See, that just proves that some things like this should be left alone. The original 1994 hand drawn animated feature was way better, still holds up after 25 years and, and should remain so. But I know, with all the Disney live action remakes we're getting, it's just going to keep on going and will never stop. Well, anyway, I'm going to do another movie review this week. And this time, it's an excellent sci fi thriller that came out on March 18, 2011. And I just recently picked it up at Best Buy a few weeks ago. Simply called Limitless. It's a story about what was it like? If you're taking a special pill that suddenly changes your whole entire lifestyle and become more smart and intelligent, not to mention rich and powerful, you know. Well, that's what uh, Eddie Mara had felt. I mean, he's a struggling author, down on his luck, underdog, whose girlfriend's been, who, who has a girlfriend who just recently broken him up you know, due to his lack of skills but his friend somehow helps him going through all of this particular changes that's happening to him you know living out wearing all these tattered clothes all alone in his old apartment and trying to get his book made and he just lost his sense of intelligence well that pill would actually help him out so now he'll become even better than ever. So that's the story. But it can also lead to um, a lot of danger happening. Now, for its 27 million budget, that was a modest hit. It's actually based on a novel called The Dark Fields. That's by Alan Gunn. But it's uh, being adapted uh, by writer Leslie Dixon, the same screenwriter who gave us Overboard, along with Outrageous Fortune, Mrs. Doubtfire, The Thomas Crown Affairs, uh, among many others. And you got an excellent cast right here, including Bradley Cooper playing the role of Eddie Mara. You got Abby Cornish. From the movie called Somersault. Yeah, she's a uh, Swedish actress. And you got Robert De Niro, you know, just a legendary actor, just playing the, a boss who suddenly wants to have him um, be partners with, you know, especially during the, the whole merger that was going around, you know, that sort of thing. But it's a great film. It has. Um, it's also the unrated extended cut that they include, but it also has the theatrical cut on the back. Just um, two features. Yeah, only um, a short running time. Yeah, one is four minutes. The other is like eleven. Has a trailer included, but you get two cuts: theatrical version and the unrated extended cut plus an alternate ending that was very special. Also commentary with uh, director Neil Berger. All in there. Yeah, yeah this is what the disc looks like. <laughs> Which they, this was actually a repackage uh, release because they changed the, the, the color of the disc cart. If you had the old uh, Blu-ray, that's the same thing. You have a digital copy included, and plus you would have the artwork that looks exactly like this. So excellent. This movie became um, pretty popular. That it eventually became a TV series, uh, aired on CBS in 2015, which I never saw. Uh, sadly, it was short-lived; only lasted one season out of 22 episodes. But it follows the events uh, after this movie, where. You get Bradley Cooper playing the role, but it leads to another actor 
playing uh, a role that's similar to him, but he takes uh, the pill and he becomes uh, more special than ever before. But it can also lead to a lot of danger. Okay. Well, let's um, start the review already. Stars uh, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, Abby Cornish, Anna Friel from uh, The Land of the Lost and Goal, Me Without You, uh, An Everlasting Peace, among others. Johnny uh, Whitworth, Richard Bacons, Robert John Burke, yeah, Robert John Burke from Bravo Cop Free and Finner, as well as uh, Far Off Place, Remelin Rose, and Copland, which also stars Robert De Niro. Thomas uh, Arana, TV Carpio, yes, TV, what a name. Uh, Patrick uh, Columber, Andrew Howard, and Ned Eisenberg. Yeah, it's written by Leslie Dixon, and it's directed by Neil Berger, the same director who did a uh, fake documentary called um, Interview with the Assassin, as well as The Illusionist with Eric Norton, Jessica Biel, and Paul Giamatti, as well as The Virgins. The movie began set in New York City. We meet a down on his luck. Underdog is a struggling author named Eddie Morrow, who's played by Bradley Cooper, who has a girlfriend named Lindy, who's played by Abby Cornish, who's frustrated with his lack of skills that he's, she decided to break up with him. We also learned that um, he had an ex-wife named Marissa Gaunt, who's played by Anna Frill, who hasn't spoken to her in 10 years or less. But that's when he encounters uh, Burden, who happens to be the brother of Marissa, played by Johnny Whitworth, who gives Eddie a sample of what seems to be a special drug, a nootropic drug called NZT-48. Once he took the drug, he begins to discover that it has acquired perfect recreations of everything that he never had seen before, that it actually improves uh, his intelligence through the brain, so he's becoming more smarter than ever before, he begins to see a better vision than, than he once was, so it, it actually improves his eyesight. And once he, he went inside the, his apartment, you know, within 30 seconds of time to, to take for the pill to improve, he chats with um, the landlady or neighbor next door to get in touch because uh, he, he learns that uh, she actually reads a, a book that she actually loves to, to read and study. and So the two suddenly make love and they started studying and, and he begins to actually improve his book a whole lot better which took him three days till the next day when the effects had worn off. He actually gave his entire um, pages uh, straight to his publisher and they actually praised it so now he's becoming more successful than ever before well or what seems to be so in order for, for him to do so they decided to seek out Burnham for more NCT 48 but then he offers um, Eddie to leave for for errands uh, inside his apartment so once he came back, he found out that he was murdered, and he learned that someone is actually stealing the drug, you know, searching for it. So he called 911 to report a murder that, that happened in his apartment, and that's when he was trying to search for the drug everywhere he puts it, and it turns out that he hid it somewhere in the oven. So he got the drugs, and as well as the wallet that was inside with all the, the cash included. Till the police arrived and, and knocked on the door, and then, and then he had to report them completely. So then, Eddie located Burnin's supply and begins to ingest his entire pills daily. So he puts them inside uh, his cabinet, yeah, where you put all the tea bags inside. You take out, 
um, and use it for tea. But so he empties out and puts all the pills so that way he'll get to use it. So now he becomes more powerful and rich, successful, really improves his entire lifestyle, appearance, sex appeal, social circle, and he even finished his entire book. So it was perfect. He gets to chat with all the friends, you know, I see making a lot of stocks. And he gets to go to a lot of places everywhere he goes and a lot of parties and clubs. I mean, he basically has the talent that he never thought he would have. He, he gets to invest everything. So at that point on, he quickly begins to make large returns on the stocks, borrows $100,000 from a Russian loan shark named Genoti, who's played by Andrew Howard. He was hired by Brogach's firm and resumes his relationship with Lindy. Well, apparently his experience had became a time skip, which is a monetary lapse in memory where it just seems to change everywhere it goes. That's when he meets a financial tycoon named Kyle Van Loon, who's played by Robert De Niro, who tests him by seeking advice on the merger with Hank Outward's company, yeah, a businessman who's played by Richard Bacons, who's uh, suddenly becoming terminally ill. But uh, after the meeting, you know, Eddie suddenly experienced an 18-hour party uh, time skip, wants up uh, hanging around with uh, the woman had sex inside the hotel room just yeah and then he's like doing all this uh, a lot of uh, fighting it was like the life of the party that he never thought he would have but then the next day he learns that he has a meeting with Ben Loon but he suddenly feels very sick because of the way the drug was affecting him because he learns that the drug actually has side effects. When he came in for the meeting, he sees a news telecast that a woman's been murdered at the local hotel room. He then recognized who the woman was, that he decided to uh, abruptly leave the meeting during his time skip, and yes, he vomited. He tries to call all the people in Vernon's uh, ledger, but it turns out that Three people were dead, while the rest were hospitalized. Then he begins to spot a man in a trench coat who's been chasing him around everywhere he goes. Once of meeting Marissa, who we learned that she was on the drug too, that he was taking. But then she attempts to stop because she begins to experience something that deals with the, the side effects that she had. You know, the mental physical withdrawal effect. So she stops taking it. So that's what Eddie learned about. Until Genity founds Eddie and demands all his, the money to be paid back immediately with interest because by then, you know, he's going to get an attack. But then he discovered that he ingested um, NCT 48, so now. He's beginning to use it, so he's becoming more successful. Um, very desperate with the pill, Eddie asks Lindy to retrieve them somewhere in the stash, but but he learns that it was inside her apartment. Because that's when he started feeling very ill. You know, he's walking, he's all dizzy, and he, he's having trouble trying to get there as soon as he can into the her office until he passes out and tries to tell her to, to take the pills from her apartment and go right away just before um, the man in the trench goes are chasing her around. So she calls uh, Eddie to see where she's at. So she's at the Central Park trying to escape from, from this man. So. Eddie told her to take the pills so that way you'll be able to have the ability to stop him and get away before you finally go back to the office and be able to take the pill. And once once he finally recovers, that's when you know, he's starting to feel healthy again.
but as far as everything's concerned, they're going for the merger as it continues and then, well, Eddie now has a new um, apartment so he'll be protected whenever danger occurs, which might lead to Genity and his henchmen that's chasing after him and all this other stuff that's going to happen next before we lead to what happens at the end. Well, I'm going to leave it at that, but anyway, it's a very excellent uh, sci-fi thriller. I mean, it really shows that, um, what was it like if you take the pill and you suddenly become more rich and powerful than ever before? Well, that's exactly how the story goes. But it can also lead to danger because of the side effects and plus everything that would happen next. I mean, if you lay off it, well, who knows how what's going to happen in the future. Unless they find a way to test it out and see if maybe they could fix uh, the drug. Now, what's really refreshing in this film is that the character was very likable. That you definitely begin to trust him. You love him so much that you want to get into the character completely. I mean, think about it. I mean, in in movies like this, you know, they always have this cliche where, well, we always have an underdog who's who's building his lifelong dream, but then once he finally gets it, his personality changes, and he wants to becoming a self arrogant, shallow asshole. That it just proves one thing: that if you're rich, you could be an asshole, but if you're not but if you're poor, well, you're actually a good person and caring. But you still struggle going for what's best in your life. And I just feel like, you know, come on. I mean, we don't need this. But that's what made it work for this film was that who would have thought that a special drug can actually do all this? But that's what I love about uh, Bradley Cooper, the film. I mean, this is actually one of his finest performances. I mean, he's also the executive producer for the film. And this is the kind of character that you never expected to see. You know, when he's not playing an asshole in Wedding Crashers or, or playing all these uh, typical guys in comedies, this is a character that really works. And you really care for it. And that's what I love about it. And this is what we need to see nowadays in films. Uh, Robert De Niro was great in the film, but given the amount of screen time he was having, um, he just plays a businessman, you know, trying to go through a merger for another company. I'm going into the merger, yeah, going for the deal with the merger, and actually offer him as his partner, hoping you know, things will get settled, but. You know how that goes. Uh, Abby Cornish, um, she wasn't bad. Um, I mean, she was there, but that's all she is, just playing the girlfriend of, of Eddie. But I, I did like that moment, too, was that when she did took the pill, trying to get away from the man in the trench coat, yeah, because it is cliche, too. You know, they had all these killers going after them. You know, just after taking the drug, they become smart and powerful and rich. That somehow they wanted to take it too, and or it also leads to to murder because you know they're not do they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So yes, it's scary. Um, there was a scene where once uh, she ran straight into the, the skating rink at Central Park trying to escape from the guy, you know, trying to get away from all the skaters. And the guy was ready to stab her. Well, there was a scene where she takes the little girl and sets decided to she takes the little girl she takes the little girl, lifts her up and just uh does a uh, just does a flying kick straight into her, his face. And that's where it slits. Um, that's where 
he got a cut slit on his uh, cheek. Like you thought it might have been the knife, but it's actually straight from the, the skates, and that's where she escapes. And he was she, he was also not unconscious too, just to get away from the, the care, just to get away from. Um, the rest of the cast, uh, not bad. I mean, they, they played them exactly uh, straight. Um, I find it really interesting, too, because considering that they had done some changes through the novel, I never read the novel, so I can't say. But I've heard, um, but I found some information on it. Well, we did learn that uh, Shia LaBeouf was going to be cast originally, but instead uh, they gave it to Bradley Cooper, which he was the executive producer once again. And Universal Pictures was going to release the film through uh, Relativity Media and Rogue Pictures. But that never happened. So. Yeah, like I, I would imagine Shia LaBeouf playing that role. I mean, that would be pretty interesting. But Bradley Cooper really worked for me. Um, one thing I, I really love about this movie was that I love the way they shot this film. You know, using all these uh, camera angles, a lot of color filtering that they had to change. You know, from the beginning, when you see uh, Eddie. You know, looking down on his luck. I mean, you saw the natural uh, shades of gray. You know, all blue tints, silver type. You know, kind of like the style that they used in the movie uh, Payback with Mel Gibson. Yeah, that kind. Of. But um, but once he takes the drug, that's when the the vision starts to change, and that's where it becomes all yellow and orange. And then suddenly, you see all these. Uh, foreground, middle ground uh, scenes when you zoom all the way straight into the city. Like it goes directly from frame to frame. Yeah, all all zooming in in that uh, foreground. I was like, wow, I mean some vision that you have to see once you take the drug. I mean it's it's all psychedelic and they actually use like special cameras to create these shots. I'm like, wow, I mean, who would have thought that a drug like this can actually change everything for your appearance, all of that. That, that, that was really uh, awesome, the way they did it. It's beautifully shot, too. And I love it. Um, now, yes, there have been uh, several movies like this already. I mean, well, especially the movie that came out a few years ago called Lucy. Where this time, uh, Scarlett Johansson plays uh, a role where she takes a, a special drug, and that's when she became more powerful than ever. But that's more of an action movie than the, than than a suspense thriller that we got here. But it does actually have the uh, the scenes in the movie where, yes, um, and I mentioned it earlier, well, in the middle part of it was. Um, the scene where he actually had a, a very uh, strong memory where he begins to beat the shit out of all these uh, bums and all these uh, scums out there in the New York subway station and this is where he fantasizes uh, all the martial art movies that he watches like Bruce Lee and he has also watched all, all the History Channel and all this other stuff on how to actually beat the shit out of those guys you know like having to Take the the victim's uh, mouth and you know just put it on your fingers, stretch it out, and and just beat them up completely. <laughs> that sort of thing. I, I thought, wow, that's really cool. I mean, who would have thought that a drug like this can actually make you learn how to do all of that stuff? You get to do a lot of exercise. You get to jump from a cliff that he did when he went to all these special places with his friends that he gets to know each other. I mean, this is like, this is the best life that he ever got that he never thought he would, really would have. But I guess it shows that if, that, well, if you haven't taken the drug, then 
you will never have the experience you will ever have. But, but in the end, I mean, he did learn something. But as far as that's concerned, he will improve. And, but I kind of like the fact that, yes, he does become more successful. And, and he stayed that way for the rest of his entire life. So that means that he doesn't go back to his old ways like, like he did before. The film Climax was excellent too and very exhilarating where just at the beginning of the movie, I mean he's already so powerful than ever that he owns a high rise building that he gets to live at and but everything was already moved in but he's being chased down by Jennedy and his two henchmen which they just broke into and actually killed the next door neighbor and was ready to go after him already took out all these uh, cameras and he was ready to jump out of the building but no such luck that well he takes matters of his own hands by actually taking his knife and stabbing him just when he was about to uh, kill him they're about to go after his safe which turns out to be all these uh, these cut out hands yeah especially that especially one of the hands that actually gave a middle finger I thought that was really clever and then the, yeah he stabs the guy kills him and then all the blood starts to rush from his uh, bloodstream that you know, from that wound that he that happened like puddle of blood and, and suddenly he's he swallows the, the the bloodstream from the pill that was in, injected to him, and that's where he he begins to improve it since he since he had the last pill that that fell off, and then he just kills these two henchmen by using the uh, the television screen, and actually uh, stabs uh, one henchman in the eye with the injection. So he's all blind, um, he had the gun, he was trying to sh shoot uh, Eddie, but he also shot uh, his other henchman. So then he's about to go after him. And what I heard though was that, going back to the uh, behind the scenes, was that Bradley actually did his own stunts. Yeah, Bradley Cooper had a uh, stunt coordinator who uh, was ready to actually use him as a stunt double to do that scene but actually he actually but what happened was he watched the the entire scene in motion and he, he eventually did all the stunts but he got hurt and so was uh, the two henchmen the two actors who played the henchmen yeah so they, they had a few in injuries here and there but in the end I mean he felt bad about it but in the end it was perfect I love that so so there's just a few amount of action in the movie but not much I, I, I love that so. but anyway it's an excellent movie uh, check it out it's worth it's worth your time um, I wish I could find the TV series though I want to see how the TV series uh, turns out I mean, it's not even on physical media, like on Blu-ray or DVD, not even digital either, so. But I hope someday they'll re they will release it. I mean, it's, it's kind of a bummer that it didn't do so well and only lasted one season on CBS. But whatever. Anyway, that's Limitless, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.